Episode 560, Five Easy STEM Activities Any Teacher Can Do. The 10-Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So today we're talking with Chris Woods. He is a teacher and also the host of the STEM Everyday podcast, which goes live on Tuesdays. And today we're going to talk about five easy STEM activities any teacher can do. Chris, where do we start? Well, I think, first of all, what you just said is really important, Vicki. And, and again, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, but you said five things that every teacher and, and I think that's a really important point that every teacher knows that they're a STEM teacher. And, and if if all we ever think about is STEM as being uh, let's go down the hallway to the STEM lab or uh, when the kids actually like some schools have a STEM class. Um, we need every kid doing STEM. So, yeah, there's some easy things you can do in your classroom. Now, if, if you're like a, a literacy teacher or uh, you got reading going on in your classroom, uh, take a look at the protagonist or in the story and they're dealing with something and they're trying to get out of a situation. Have the kids figure out a way to to adapt that uh, with with STEM, is there a way they could engineer the way out? Is there a an invention that they could create? Even even graphing the story, the the highs and lows of the situations. Those are easy ways to do it with connect it with literacy. I love that, and I went through a, a personal life planning thing with a, a fellow named Donald Miller a while back, and he actually has you graph the highs and lows of your life. And I noticed that very often after my lowest lows came my highest highs. It was really (laughs) weird. And so we can pull pull STEM even into writing in that way. Great idea. What's our second idea? The second thing is just use regular every everyday kind of things, like especially if a kids bring it up. Like one day we were talking about Oreos for some reason in my class. I think I showed them a video of these cool Oreo separator machines on YouTube, which are really funny. If you've never looked at them, they're uh, so hilarious, like just these over mechanized ways to separate an Oreo. But but the kids said, well, what about double stuff? Are they really double stuff? So I was like, well, we should find out. So a couple of days later, I brought in regular Oreos and double stuff. Oreos. And I said, okay, let's figure it out. How are we going to figure it out? Now, mine's a high school math classroom. So we talked about ratios, the kids, brought, but the kids brought up those things. And I didn't even have a lesson plan for it. I just said, let's figure this out. And so many things like that can be a great avenue to introduce STEM just into your everyday class. And it excites the kids because it's relevant to something they're curious about, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And I tell you what, one girl actually brought in her own milk from home in a thermos because she wanted to have her Oreos dipped in milk. Oh, dear goodness, children. Okay, what's our third idea? All right. So my school has a water bottle filling station. I don't know if yours does, Vicki, but uh, you've probably seen it. It is so popular. It's crazy. You know, but take that and and say that is I call that thing a data builder. It magically creates data every day. So instead of just filling up your water bottle at it, send a kid down there every class period or once per hour or once per day and then have those kids come back with the numbers. They can graph them. They can figure out averages. They can figure out constant increase, whatever age level you can adapt it. You could even just have the kids take that number. And is it divisible by two? Is it divisible? by three. You could you can do almost anything with that machine just by grabbing the numbers off of it. Oh, what a great idea because it is fascinating. And I remember when we reached 999, somebody else said, hey, I want to be 1000, right? So people are paying attention to that number. How interesting. Oh, yeah. I, even okay. had, I, I even had one kid actually offer to help me get it all the way to 5000 when we were close. He, he drank, I think, like three water bottles full. Oh, my goodness. Okay, what's our fourth? All right. Another one, same kind of thing. Just looking for those real ways that you can do story problems in your classroom instead of those, you know, just kind of plain old story problems that are in your book or on your worksheet. But just just make real things. So like I brought in a box of alphabets and I said, we're going to count up and see. And it was basically it was probability. And I said, is it actually equally uh, spaced? All those all those all those letters in the alphabets box. And here's the spoiler. It's not. But I had every kid, I had a Google Sheet, and so every kid could input their data into it. So then it also became a collaborative project uh, as well. Oh, and did they get to eat them after they they did the project? <laughs> yes, and some of them started spelling words with it. They, they would spell, <laughs> look, look, Mr. Woods, I spelled STEM. Look, Mr. Woods, I spelled math. And- oh, fun. I love that. Okay, what's our fifth yeah. idea? 
And the last one I want to talk about is the shoe design challenge. Now, I, a couple of years ago, I always I have, I have a hands on geometry class that I teach as well for kids that have a little bit more trouble with learning math. And kids always say, when are we ever going to use this stuff? I mean, you've heard that line before, right, Vicki? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, not as much in computer science, but they'll come in and say it about other things that usually yeah. is the, the topic they hate. Yeah. And, and we hear it a lot in math. And when are we ever going to use this? Well, so we were doing area and perimeter and I, I had the kids trace their the bottoms of their shoes because that's that's not a standard kind of shape. It's not a rectangle. It's not a triangle, but it's still a very important idea to help kids. And they had to estimate because you kind of got to estimate the boxes. So we came up with different strategies for that. And we finished and got a good idea of, of area and perimeter. And the kids said, well, can we make shoes? What, what about the rest of the shoe? And I said, well, that sounds like a lot of fun. You know, secretly, I'm thinking of all the different applications of things in it. So just over the next couple of days, the kids, I gave them supplies. I, I had some cardboard. I had some paper. I said, here you go. See what you can do. See what you can make up. And these kids amazed me by the things that they made. And, and they first, they're all like, this is going to be fun and this is going to be easy. And they all hit that difficult spot where they had to figure out how to make something three dimensional out of two dimensional dimensional pieces. And that's that's really what designers and engineers have to do every single day. And all mi mixed in there, I was showing them videos of where like Nike designers, what kind of things that they go through in the process or Red Wings boots, how they test their boots. And, and so we got to see some of the technology that really also goes on. And I could I could just easily say those are ways that this STEM, this this math that you're using every day builds into a real career, a real job someday. I love this because you're what I call a teacherpreneur. It's like an it's an entrepreneur, but it's a teacherpreneur. It's somebody who customizes the classroom, accepts accountability, but you can really create these incredible projects. Now, Chris, and I, you and I have something in common. We're both from very rural areas. And, you know, some folks in rural areas say they make excuses. Oh, I can't do computer yeah. science or I can't do STEM. What is your secret to having these all all these ideas? Well, I think, first of all, you know, Vicki, we got to rely on that that PLN that we have out there. If we're if we're on Twitter, if we're on social media, everybody is sharing ideas. Now, I mean, you could you could go into the wrong side of Twitter and just see people ranting about politics or, or things like that. But if you look at all these educators sharing these great ideas, and then you can adapt it to your own classroom. You say, well, maybe I don't have access to 3D printers, but I have Play-Doh. I don't have access to a laser cutter, but we have cardboard and scissors. And that's how you can adapt anything, no matter where you are, no matter what you have for your classroom. And, you know, before you can get to the 3D printer, you do have to start with with 3D design. And I usually end up with my kids using cardboard because it is actually very hard to design for a 3D printer if you don't know how it gets together in real life. Exactly. And a couple of great ideas for using cardboard. Remember that your school cafeteria is the best supplier of free cardboard right there in your school because they get all that food stuff in boxes and then cut that cardboard up into flat pieces so that it's already manageable. The kids can pick a size that they need instead of thinking of it always as a box. They think of it as a two dimensional piece of, of building material. Oh, I love that. That's that's a fan, those are fantastic. I'm um, just sitting here writing notes because we actually got seven things out of each. So if you want to get a lot more ideas from Chris <laughs> Woods, you need to subscribe to the STEM Everyday podcast. Podcasts are a fantastically growing experience for educators everywhere. Uh, there's so much professional development you can get. You can customize your very own learning by listening in the car and listening to things that you care about that'll improve your life. So thanks, Chris. Oh, thank you very much, Vicki. Hey, so your challenge today is to try an easy STEM activity and then share it. Hashtag it STEM or tweet at me and maybe you'll get mentioned on a future show. Lots of amazing conversations happening um, on Twitter and lots of other places. So remember, educators who care, share. Find an easy STEM activity, try one from today's show or develop your own and then share it.